I said as soon as I was done, and I'm done now, so yeah. Um, it uploaded like two seconds ago. Just got to get to the to the ESPN, to the thing, to the page um, where it talks about... Oh, oh, okay. Anyways, Texas plays Oklahoma tomorrow, Saturday, October 14th, in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Like, the actual Cotton Bowl. People keep on asking me, is it in the real Cotton Bowl or is it where they play the Cotton Bowl Bowl in Cowboy Stadium? I'm like, no, they play in the actual Cotton Bowl. Just Google it. Google. I'm not frustrated. I'm just saying that they play in the actual Cotton Bowl. It's like the only game that actually matters in the Cotton Bowl anymore. No offense to anyone who's played the Heart of Dallas Bowl or Air Force and whoever they play in the Cotton Bowl. But let's be honest, this is the only game that matters anymore in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, anyways, Oklahoma. They lost to Iowa State. They're coming off that. That could rather be a good thing because they got exposed, or it could be a bad thing because no one likes playing a pissed off Oklahoma. So, yeah. I'm going to describe how I feel the different scenarios of the game are going to go. Just real quick. So, number one, Texas defense shows up, Texas offense starts working. Oklahoma's defense plays normal. Oklahoma's offense just has a bad day. That results in a Texas win by 10 or more points. Now, Oklahoma's offense shows up. Their defense shows mass improvement. Texas offense goes cold. Texas defense does decent. That results in an Oklahoma blowout. Then there's the situation where Oklahoma's offense shows up and Texas defense shows up. Texas offense shows up and Oklahoma's defense kind of shows up. You got a close game that might come down to the last possession. And then you got where they played like last week, and you, you know what? It's the Red River rivalry, Red River Showdown, Red River Showdown, Red River. They have a bunch of names for it. Anyways, um, yeah, whatever it's called. Let's call it the Red River rivalry because that's fun to say. Uh, it's unpredictable. Uh, just going back to 2010, 2010, it was a Texas team who was lowly ranked. They were like 18th after a loss to UCLA or something. Uh, they were expected not to do that well. Excuse me. Not well against this Oklahoma team that they played in 2010. They ended up losing by 8, I think, 20-28. to 28. 2011 and 2012, Oklahoma just absolutely blew out Texas, and I think one of those was supposed to be a close game. I don't remember. 2013, Oklahoma was supposed to beat Texas by like 20, and then Texas beat them by 16. 2014, Oklahoma was supposed to blow out Texas again, one by five. Uh, 2015, we all remember 2015. Yes, you do, Oklahoma. Don't deny it. You know what happened in 2015. One of the worst Texas teams in program history walks into the Cotton Bowl one and four after getting blown out down the street against TCU 50 to seven. Comes into the Cotton Bowl against an undefeated Oklahoma team with high hopes of making the playoffs. And what happens? Texas stumps them. Just beats them 24-17. Uh, they led the whole game. They never trailed. That's literally what I just said in different wording. And they won. So, yeah. And then 2016, as expected, it te or Oklahoma was supposed to win by double digits. They only won by five. But as everyone anticipated, both teams' defense sucked last year. And it was a 45-40 Oklahoma victory. And so I expect another close game this year. Yeah. So on the Oklahoma side, you have Blaker Mayfield. Um, Blaker, he is um, he's, he's doing good this year. Uh, 15 touchdowns, zero interceptions. That's pretty good, I guess. That's okay. That's horrible. I'm just kidding. That's really good. Um, he's been playing very well, but... He also has done some stuff that he will regret if he ever loses again, as you saw last week against Iowa State, a.k.a. the flag, when he got a flag and planted it in the middle of Ohio State's field. And then last week, Iowa State, they got the state of Iowa, not like the college, but the state, like the independent state, like one of the 50, and planted that flag in the middle of Oklahoma, and they have a grass field, so that stuck nice. Um... I mean, I'm not saying it was a good thing. I'm just saying that the, since it was grass, it's stuck in there. 
Whereas when they did it on the turf in Ohio, when Blaker did that, it it fell. Yeah. I know his name is Baker. I just like to call him Blaker. Okay. Just FYI. Then they have Trey Sermon and Abdul, 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 Adams for the running backs. Uh, Adams, I don't know if he's playing because he he did something to himself last week that got him hurt against Iowa State. I'm going to Google him real quick, see see what his status is. I probably should have Googled this before, but I'm already here. So why not? Um, Give me some news on him. There's no status on him, so I don't know. He might play, he might not play, but if Oklahoma has him, they have two running backs that they could play. So, yeah. Uh, they also have, yeah, they have Baker Mayfield who can make plays. He can scramble, which can make plays downfield, give them down, downfield time. He can run. So, yeah, that's going to be a struggle for Texas defense. They're going to have to stop him. But, yeah. And then Texas defense, obviously, they love points against Maryland. And then it went uphill from there. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, they shut out San Jose State. I know it's San Jose State, so don't expect a big woohoo. But then they played a really good game against USC, but they lost. So that that's still a little bad that they lost. But anyways, uh, they won. They won against Iowa State on the road. Oklahoma lost to Iowa State at home. Um... They only allowed seven against Iowa State, and then they beat K-State at home, and they allowed 34 points, which I was not too impressed with the run defense that game. Yet somehow they only allowed 140 when it I could have sworn they allowed 360 yards. Um, but, yeah, very intense game last week. I was all over the place emotionally. Yeah, and then on the Texas offensive side, you have Sam Ellinger. Uh, his nickname is Elling Wheeler. It's like the 18 Wheeler, but Elling Wheeler because he trucked a guy. Um, yeah. So he, Tom Herman won't announce who's starting. Even on the roster, he has co starting QBs, but we all know he's going to start Ellinger because just look at his numbers from last week 380 passing yards and 107 rushing yards, 487 combined yards. That's pretty good, especially for a true freshman. So this the Cotton Bowl is a completely like weird not weird but like it's just a different environment because like you go to your side and all the people are cheering for you and then you go to the other side and everyone hates you and is like cursing you out or something and yelling at you. So it's it's one of my favorite games. It's just like it's like the third it was ranked the third biggest rivalry behind Army Navy and Michigan Ohio State. Yeah. Um but here's the real matchup that that could decide the game. Is Colin Johnson and the receiving core of Texas versus Oklahoma secondary, mainly Colin Johnson. Oklahoma struggled in the past few games. i uh, just going to look up the numbers here, but they allowed almost 200 yards to one receiver, a 6 3 receiver at Baylor. Uh, and uh, Baylor scored 41 points on them. Let's see here. Yeah, they allowed 192 yards to one guy on 11 receptions lot, or two weeks ago against Baylor, three weeks ago against Baylor. And that is just, they exposed the secondary there. And I was like, that's a fluke. They're never going to let that happen again. But then last week happened, and they allowed, I mean, they just allowed Alan Lazard to get big catches when it mattered, and he was just able to beat the secondary for Oklahoma. And Colin Johnson, in my opinion, is, well, I'm a Texas fan, so you're expecting these hits. But let's be honest, Colin Johnson, the 6'6", 225-pound a receiver who can catch the majority of the 50-50 balls he gets. Well, not the majority. Well, yeah, well, let's say he gets the majority. He is a very tall receiver, and he is very athletic, and he can grab those passes. He is a very good receiver. So if Oklahoma can't shut him down, then that will be a definite issue for them. If they can shut him down, that will force Texas to run the ball more or look for different options. So, yeah, that's what I have for that game. And so... That leads me to the conclusion that for this game, the final score will be 